Shalom. Today we are continuing the Hebrew alphabet letter by letter and we'll learn two more new letters. Make sure you have your font chart. The first letter we're going to learn today is the Ayin. You will find it right after the Samech, which is the round letter that we learned earlier. Its number value is 70 and its picture meaning is the eye. Before we continue, I want to compare the Ayin with the Tzadi which are two similar looking letters, and we've already learned the Tzadi. So on the right hand column, you see three different fonts, which are Ayin, and in the left hand column, you see the three Tzadi from the same fonts. If you look carefully, you can see that the Ayin, the right hand stroke is completed, and then the left hand stroke is added. In the Tzadi, you start in the upper left and you come down to the lower right and do the tail across the bottom. And then the upper right hand stroke is added. So it's easy to confuse these. I suggest you look at them for a minute so you can tell them apart. Ayin and Tzadi. Part of the problem is they both kind of resemble an English letter Y, but you will learn to distinguish them after a little while. The ayin is actually a silent letter. All we will hear is the vowel associated with it. The zayin, which makes a z z z sound, is a narrow letter. It has two parts, a little hat on top, and then a stroke coming down. Its number value is seven, and its picture meaning is weapon. Now these two letters together make two different words. The first one is ez, it's got kind of a short e, sound is and it means a she goat Genesis 15 9 and he said unto him take me a heifer of three years old and a she goat of three years old and a ram of three years old and a turtle dove and a young pigeon here where uh, Abraham is cutting the covenant with Jehovah in Genesis 27 16 and she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck here Rachel is trying to disguise Jacob to look like, feel like Esau. Remember, Isaac cannot see well, but he's going to feel him. So goats have a long, hairy fur, as opposed to sheep, which have wool. For a seasonal citation, Exodus 12.5, Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year, ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. This is kind of interesting because we always think that the Passover is a Passover lamb, but in those days you could use a goat for that sacrifice. Daniel 8.8, 8, Therefore the he-goat waxed very great, and when he was strong the great horn was broken, for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. So here... This goat is being mentioned symbolically, and it is symbolic of uh, Alexander the Great, the ruler of Greece, who basically conquered the whole known world sometime around 300 BC. But in fact, the people who are from Macedonia will tell you that he was not from Greece, that he was Macedonian. The other word we have of these two letters is oz, with an O sound, and it means strength. Exodus 15.2 Yehovah is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him a habitation, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. This quote appears three different places in Tanakh, and we have a different video about that. Here, I'll give you the link for that. We're going to see it again. 2 Samuel 6.14 And David danced before Yehovah with all his might, and David was girded in a linen ephod. Psalm 8.2 Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. You might be familiar with the place where Yeshua cites this scripture, but he doesn't use the word strength there. He uses praise in Matthew. He is quoting, in fact, the Septuagint right there. Proverbs 18.10, the name of Yehovah is a strong tower, Migdal Oz, a strong tower, the righteous run into it and is safe. 
There's a related verb root, a zaz. You can see it's ayin, zayin, zayin. We've talked about this. It's very common where the second letter will be double. And it means to be strong or to prevail. Judges 6.2. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. Because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens, which are in the mountains, and caves and strongholds. Proverbs 21.29. A wicked man hardeneth his face, but as for the upright, he directeth his way. So we have this sense of not only of being strong, but of uh, forcing one's way to be hard. Now this is a picture of a machine gun, uh, which is called an Uzi. And I always thought, well, it's a great name for a gun. The soldier can say, this is my strength. I'm fighting with my gun. But it's actually named for the man who invented it, who was Uziel Gal, and so his nickname is Uzi, and that's what they call the gun. We don't actually see any talk of separating the sheep from the goats until the Brichet Shah when Yeshua talks about it in Matthew 25, 32. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. We do see some negative connotation about the goat in the Old Testament, in the Tanakh, in Leviticus 16.8. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one for Jehovah and the other lot for the scapegoat. The scapegoat, the word there is Azazel. You see the ayin zayin for the goat. And then another verb root, which is azal. Azal means to, be le to leave, to go away, to be used up. Deuteronomy 32, 36. For Yehovah shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone, and there is none shut up or left. In 1 Samuel 9, 7. Then said Saul to his servant, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man? For the bread is spent, it's gone, we don't have any. The bread is spent in our vessels, and there is not a present to bring to the man of God. What have we? Now, Azazel, the word scapegoat, is actually coined by Tyndale for the uh, 1530 translation that he did of the Bible into English. And it means the escape goat. In Yom Kippur, we see there are two goats. One is given to Yehovah, slaughtered at the sanctuary, and the other one is led away out into the wilderness. It is documented later that they actually push the thing off a cliff. He doesn't really escape because it wouldn't do to have the goat that has all the sin on its head to come wandering back into the camp. So, But this is what's called the escape goat and later it became the scapegoat. So it's the goat who is gone, he's Azal. It is associated in the literature with a demon named, uh, with a demon called Samael. Both Samael and Azazel are mentioned in the book of Enoch. And perhaps there is a legend that this goat was led off to appease this demon god. However, for Tanakh, that, that doesn't really figure. We're not gonna see sacrificing to a demon as a positive thing. There is some question whether Azazel is the actual goat or the place, and I can tell you that in modern Hebrew, the phrase lech lazazel is literally how they would, how we would translate into English, go to hell. There is another negative connotation for the goats in Leviticus 17.7, and they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils, after whom they have gone a whoring. This shall be a statute forever unto them throughout their generation. So we see we're not supposed to sacrifice to devils. The word there, which is devils, is a different word, which is translated goat also, and that is seir. Uh, if you know about Esau and his allotment of land, it is in Mount Seir. Esau was hairy all over like a goat. And these translations that you see listed here actually translate that word devil as goat demons. In the JPS 1917, it's translated as satyrs. Uh, satyr is a mythological animal 
in Roman representations, it's a man with goat's ears, a tail, legs, and horns. Universally, in different cultures, goats have a negative or demonic connotation. So what, what is the reason for that? What is the difference between sheep and goats that they need to be separated? And often they're not separated. In the Middle East, you can still see places where the flock runs together, the goats run together with the sheep, and the shepherd keeps them both. They are extremely similar in biology, and they can even mate together, although it's not usually successful. They are used for the same products. They're used for milk and meat for fabric and for the skin. Interestingly, Yom HaKippurim, the Day of Atonement, does require goats. It seems that goats are smarter and they're uh, maybe bolder, they're much more curious, they're more troublesome to take care of. Uh, I have a friend who keeps sheep and some goats and she says that uh, goats just have more attitude, they're more self-willed, they get into trouble more easily. Sheep are uh, more trusting, they're uh, more malleable, they will conform to the shepherd much more easily than goats. Maybe we can look at this as two parts of, of ourselves. We have that self-willed part, the part that wants to do what we want to do, we want to just go investigate everything, chew on everything, and then we have our softer part, which is willing and wanting to be conformed to the Lord. The fact is that both these parts of ourselves must be sacrificed in order for us to fulfill our complete surrender to the ways of Yeshua, the ways of Yehovah, what he commands us to do. So we see both animals are accepted animals for sacrifice. So here's our memory verse. As we said before, this verse appears in three places. Here's another place. We looked at Exodus. Now we're in Isaiah 12 too. I will I'll read the verse through, then I'll read it slowly, word by word, with translation, and then I'll read it through again. Ki ozi vizimrat ya Yehovah vayihi li lishua. Ki, because... Ozi, my strength. Vizimrat, the song of Yah. Yehovah, Vayehi, and it becomes Li, to me, Li Yeshua, my salvation. Translated, Behold, God is my strength and my song, and He has become my salvation. Again, Ki ozi vizimrat ya Yehova vayehi li lishua. That's it for today. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. Until next time, tasimit ha'inayim al hashamayim. Keep your eye on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.